Delighted to say that joining the show, the wonderful Super Bowl winning head coach Brian Billick, along with our friends at X Tech Pads and uh, Coach. It's been, it was a, a great divisional weekend towards conference championship. Just three games left in this season. So there's lots for us to, to tuck into. I, I wanted to start off with your former team, Baltimore, and um, the moving on from Mark Ingram this week. That conversation, when you have to let a veteran go and move on from them, because it's what's best for the team, even though you know they've right. been a great servant. It's always tough, uh, particularly if it's someone of long standing. Now, Mark could come to them in free agency, and but been a big part of the success they've had the last couple of years. But that's the inevitable march of the NFL, that because of cap reasons, uh, that's very, very real. And, and you have to make those tough choices. And it's not fair to the player, uh, whether it's whether you have to let them go, whether you have to cut back on a contract of an existing player. Um, you, you have to manipulate your dollars in a prudent way. And it's important to remember that the way the league is structured, the pie is only so big. It's a big pie, but it's only so big and it can only get sliced so many ways. And, and, and the players, I think, understand that every dollar I give you has to come out of somebody else's pocket. Uh, sometimes I think people mistakenly think, well, the owners can just come up with that and, and it, it's coming out of the owner's pocket. Well, no, the way it's structured, and that's what makes the league so balanced and, and, and fair, which is great, which is why you have a team in Green Bay, small market, Tampa, Kansas City, really small Buffalo, small market teams that can compete for a championship. It's not always New York and Miami and Chicago and LA as it is in some other sports because of the money. So it's, it's a good system, but so that is, they are tough conversations and most of them understand. Yeah, there's a time to it. Uh, he still feels like he can play and he probably can. It's going to be in a diminished role. Uh, and, and because of the money, uh, uh, Baltimore is uh, just going to have to do it in a way, you know, someone else is going to have to, to pay that freight because they need to use that money elsewhere. A lot of conversation off the back of the loss this weekend. A weird game, it has to be said, and I don't think Baltimore played as badly as three points suggests by any stretch. But the one thing that I've heard time and time again is they need a number one receiver. They need an outside guy. Do you think that's somewhere the team need to be focusing on in free agency in the draft? Yeah, and it has been for a long, long time. And for some reason, as good as Baltimore has been in drafting and acquiring free agent, that's been one area they haven't been able to solve, even going back to my days there. Uh, a lot of other areas, yeah, but that when you look at Pittsburgh, who seems like whoever they take at receiver ends up being a great player. Baltimore has struggled with that. And yes, you do need now number one, true number ones, guys that can dictate coverage are very rare in this league. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are good. Uh, Marquise Br uh, uh, Brown is very, very good, but he's not a number one. He doesn't totally dictate coverage um, the way a handful of guys do in the league. And they're hard to come by. Uh, but yes, that would certainly help Lamar Jackson. It's vis-a-vis -vis saying, and Lamar's got to be better throwing the ball down the field. As brilliant as they are running the ball, and they are. We've not seen a team ability to run in the history of the game like the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and you got to give Buffalo credit for counteracting that. And again, holding it to three points. Uh, because in today's game, you have to be able to have that explosiveness and that product. You've got to be able to, to win a championship. I still believe this, even with the changes that are going on, you have to have a guy that can win from the pocket. Doing outside the other things is great. You can do that. Mahomes does that brilliantly, but he can also beat you from the pocket. Josh Allen beat you from the pocket. Certainly, uh, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, who's as good at moving outside, making throws outside the design of the offense, as he beat you from the pocket. Right now, Lamar Jackson can't necessarily beat you from the pocket, and that's the challenge. One guy who certainly could beat you from the pocket over his career was Philip Rivers, announces his retirement today after 17 years in the league. Uh, the question I've been immediately asked is, Hall of Fame or Hall of Very Good? <laughs> I think it's Hall of Fame. That, that's always tough, you know, because the fall, the Hall of Fame is is one, the one that said, well, if we let everybody in, then you diminish the value of the Hall. But Philip Rivers, the length of his career, the fact that he doesn't have a Super Bowl is, uh, okay, that's fine. But, but I don't know that that can be the final criteria because that's team success. Clearly, he's exhibited the, you know, uh, the level, whether it's statistics, the ability to win. He's done it with two different teams. 
Yeah, I think he's a Hall of Famer. He did it in an orthodox way. Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? Maybe. We'll see. Debatable. Um, uh, Because I don't know. I'm not sure what that criteria is anymore. But clearly, uh, you know, Drew Brees is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, and, and, and if indeed he retires and there's speculation, he will, that means he and Philip Rivers will come up at the same time. And so when you compare, that's going to be tough for Philip Rivers, because you're going to see Drew Brees, who's a guaranteed first ballot hall of famer. He has all the statistics and he has a Super Bowl win. Philip Rivers has a lot of statistics close and he doesn't have a, so when that comparison, when they go to vote, okay, we'll do Rivers because rarely you're going to put two quarters back in at the same time. So there's a lot of things working against him. But at the end of the day, yes, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Hadn't really thought about the uh, the kind of the, the log jam we're going to see. But Drew Brees this year, more than likely Ben over the next couple of years. Yeah. Tom Brady, when he eventually does retire, ridiculous as though he looks at 43. So, yeah, I hadn't really thought that that's going to be. Aaron Rodgers, yeah, the yeah, same one. Yeah, not far off, I'm sure. Um Finally, before I get to the games this weekend, one guy who has looked like he's got certainly Hall of Fame traits in his career early on is Deshaun Watson. Now, if you if you were in a situation where you were decided, right, I'm going to go hell for leather and try and go back into coaching, is that Texans job with everything going on around it something that you would touch with a 20-foot barge pole? Sure it is, because Deshaun Watson, he's a spectacular young talent that you can build a team around. The problem is Deshaun, uh, and he's a good young man. First off, if Houston, if, when you give a guy $156 million, he's a partner, okay? And he is your partner. And Houston's bad. If they did not go to him and say, well, Deshaun, here's kind of what we're thinking, they needed to do that. But that's the extent of it. Deshaun, you're not going to pick the next head coach or general manager any more than you're going to decide who we sign free agency or draft or how we use our cap dollars. Yes, we'd love your input as a partner. And if they didn't do that, they're bad. But, but that's the extent of it. And, and, and where is he going to go? Where does he think see, you're going to go to Phil, uh, to Jacksonville with Urban Meyer? You think Urban Meyer's going to say, yeah, Deshaun, come in here and tell us who we're going to draft. You want to go to New England with Bill Belichick? Oh, yeah, Bill will definitely do that. Oh, Deshaun, come tell us what you think we have. Now, you want input. Ray Lewis, greatest player of all time at linebacker would come in constantly and, and with Ozzy in particular and, and, and Hey, I really like this guy in free agency. Hey, these guys in the draft, here's how we should. And, and, and you, you value that, but it's okay. That's great. Now leave. And, 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 and it's our job to make the decision. I, you know, it's trite, but players play coaches, coach, general managers, manager and manage and owners own. And, and, and those are the roles and it's gotta be interactive. But if you violate those, then, I mean, that's what good teams do. And, 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 and he'll be fine. They'll end up hiring a guy. He'll sit with the new general manager and the coach. They'll talk to him, what their plans are, how they're going to put it together. It's inconceivable to me that they would let one of the brightest young talents at quarterback that we've seen in a while leave Houston. Those are hard to come by. And so finally looking forward to the games this weekend, just a line for each of them starting off with, the Buccaneers at the Packers, everyone's talking Brady Rogers. Is it as simple as that's where this matchup is going to be won? It is. It is because they're both future Hall of Famers. Uh, uh, the strengths that they have, it's going to be a good matchup. Uh, no, it's not going to be like the first game. Remember in the first game uh, that was totally Tampa Bay decided, 38-10, I think. What the Packers do? First drive, 11 plays, field goal, 60 yards. Second drive, 11 plays, 80 yards, touchdown. And then the next drive, pick six, tip ball, pick down to the two-yard line. And and it was all downhill from then. The Packers never really rebounded. They're a better team than that. Aaron Rodgers has been in that. Aaron Rodgers threw 48 touchdowns, five interceptions, two of which came against Tampa Bay. Is he going to go in and turn the ball over this game like that? No, I don't imagine. Uh, Neither do I think will, will, will Tom Brady. Uh, but these defenses are going to have something to say about it. They're going to not, I think we're going to see a repeat of what we saw in New Orleans and not giving up the big play. And in fairness to Tampa Bay, they did get Drew Brees to turn the ball over three times. So yeah, I, I think whoever has the ball in their hands last is going to be the one that wins the game. And then on the other side of things, the Bills go to the Chiefs, their first AFC championship game in 26 years. There's a lot of kind of neutrals getting behind that team, but If Patrick Mahomes plays and it looks like it's trending that way, how do you see this game going? Well, you can never dismiss uh, Kansas City. Too much talent. Patrick Mahomes too special. But, but, Buffalo's pretty good. 
that defense matches up pretty good, I think, with Kansas City. I think Josh Allen will has performed and will play much better than he did last year where he didn't perform well against Kansas City in, in Kansas City's win. And, and Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I believe he'll play, but he won't consciously do it, but you want to, you're going to be a little careful about running around and getting that next hit that might trigger the concussion again. So might that dampen a little bit of some of the magic that he does? Not consciously. He's going, I'm going to, you got how many, what are you going to hear? I'm just going to play the way I play. Okay. But in the back of your mind, do you couch that a little bit? Maybe, maybe a little bit. And Josh Allen and what they do, I think matches up very well with the Kansas City defense. So this ought to be a heck of a game. Coach, it's a pleasure as always. As people are starting to get vaccinated, we get back towards a life where right. people can play contact sport again. Go get your X-Tech pads. Unfortunately, we won't be together on Super Bowl week as we normally catch up on Radio Row, but I'm sure we'll be chatting like this on Super Bowl. We'll do it. So enjoy the game this weekend. All righty.